Cheers. Uh, what a joy to be here with all of you. Yes. And also to be uh, very much touched by the messages that we heard and the lives of the people that are here in this conference this week. And what, what we just saw on the screen and then uh, recognizing what God has done through Pastor Carl and Susie, uh, Pastor Brian, Marina, the different pastors, the walk of faith. It is really very touching and uh, inspirational and, you know, so encouraging and a very precious, very precious. Uh, my son and myself and Pastor Mark Knowles and Pastor Jomi came together. We arrived yesterday uh, here in India and we just have great expectation for what God has for us this week. I really believe that God will, will speak to us, uh, teach us, minister to us, encourage us, guide us, and also heal us, answer prayer, and magnify Christ. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And this is what we enjoy. All the messages that we heard this morning and all through the years are messages that lift up Jesus Christ. And when he is lifted up and we recognize who he is and we worship him, then we have a spiritual life. This is what we're talking about today. Would you turn with me in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1? Greetings from Pastor Shabelli. He loves you very much and speaks about God's work here in India. And he is in Africa at the moment. Greetings also from the church in Baltimore. As you are very much respected by people around the world, when we speak about God's work, we think automatically of you and God's work in India. In chapter 1, in verse 27, we read, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Ind Indians, Africans, Americans, Chinese, among the Gentiles, the mystery. When we think of the word mystery, then we think of that which transcends the known. Much of life is studying the known and those things that can be known by our nature. Science, investigation, observation, calculations, empiricism, counting, 
observing. But mystery, this is an important word to us, that God would make known what is the riches. That's an important word. The riches. The riches. The treasure. When we see the life of a believer who lives only in the natural world, then it is only a short time before the limits of their natural life are realized. That some people will see in a moment that some people live the Christian life naturally and there is no mystery. Why is there no mystery? But because God has hidden himself from the natural man. The natural man is actually limited by his reason. Blaise Pascal said, the purpose of reason is to know the limits of reason. That we are reasonable only for this reason, that we would realize that in our reason we need something more. We need a mystery. A mystery. When we see the pictures up here on the screen, we wonder why would people come to Christ? When we see people in other parts of the world or even ourselves, why would I come to Christ? Well, the reason is not obvious to people. When people look, they say, why would I come to Christ? It will cause a lot of trouble in my family. Why would I come to Christ? There's nothing really there. It is only a religion where I come to Christ. And why would I come to Christ? There's no excitement about it. There's no overwhelming emotion or reason for me to come. This is often what we see in the world. But for us, we have found what Paul said, riches. We have found riches in a mystery. We have found treasure that has not been made known to the natural man. That is why in, in our world, there are, there are so many scientists and wise men in the world that walk past, are not interested in God or Christ because they feel they already know or they understand what it is and they're not interested. Even some believers, they have become believers and for some years and then they go away. They're not interested any longer. We could say to Paul, why? In verse 27, why would you say this? Look at verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I know what it means. I think you also. 
when um, we gather here, I'm always amazed at the connections that people have with each other. Wherever you find Christ in people, there's an automatic connection. When we see each other, we are excited. Um, when we listen to each other, we are edified. When we discern and recognize that Christ is here, we are fed. We are loved. Jesus said, this is how people will know that the Father sent me, that you love one another. But this love isn't just a natural love. This is a spiritual love. This is the love that the Father has with the Son. The Son has with the Father. That love is here. Christ in us. And how do we, how do people in the Jaipur, was it, and Rajasthan, and various places of India, how would people continue and how would they be willing to pay a price or how would they understand what this is unless it's real is it real did Christ really come does Christ live in us does Christ dwell in us and is this the hope of our future, the hope of glory, the evidence that this is not a lie, but it's reality, the evidence that God is real and He's personal and He cares for us, the evidence that Christ dwells in us. Paul said, this is why I labor, that is in verse 28 and 29, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. That's what we do. We preach, teach. Pastor uh, Obed in Delhi, that's amazing. Uh, the pastors that are here, Pastor Carl, uh, the pastors that have, for years, that have lifted up Christ and preached Christ, and we, we are not sufficient for these things. We could not do this. Uh, we cannot affect a person's life, but God can. We cannot change a person's life, but Jesus does. We are not able to do these things, but God does them. Look at verse 28. Whom we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom. That's what happens. It's wisdom. When I listened to Pastor Anil this morning, and the Bible verses that he gave, and just the wisdom that is here with us, that we get in the Bible college and in reading our Bible and in our prayer life, we get wisdom and we're able to answer questions and lead people to Christ. One of my favorite uh, preachers in America is Ravi Zacharias, who many of you have heard of or listened to him. And he has a brilliant ability to make it clear that there is no other way for man but Christ, the only way. He's able to go to universities and speak to intellectuals and convince people and lead them. And what an amazing gift. Maybe someone has a gift like that and another man has a gift like this. And but it is simply God working, and it's God's desire to make Christ known amongst the people. In verse 28, that we may present every man perfect 
in Christ Jesus. That's why we assemble often. That's why we come together to these conferences. And because this is where we, we find the iron sharpening iron, the encouragement. The Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit shows us Christ. The Holy Spirit, the presence of God in your life. Many times I think of how Pastor Stevens used to tell us often about the anointing and that the service was anointed and the music was anointed. And uh, we did an outreach and it was anointed where a man had a moment, uh, a brilliant moment, and he was able to give a word in season, and it was the Spirit that gave the word. Well, the consciousness of the Holy Spirit amongst us and in our everyday life, this sensitivity to the Spirit of God, this is where we realize that our life is a mystery. It's a mystery. It, it's beyond ourselves. It's faith and love. It's God's way. Verse 29, Where do I also labor, Paul said, teaching and preaching and ministering, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. When I lived in Hungary, we had a brother there, and he had a he was a disabled. He had one leg. He had a birth defect. Uh, he had an artificial leg. Uh, he was a bit weak in his constitution, but he was a spiritual man, very edified. And uh, he started to do a Bible study in a city in Western Hungary. And uh, I found out that no one was coming. There was two people, and then sometimes no one would come. Uh, and he kept going every week on the train, sometimes by himself. And when I found out about it, I talked to him. And I said, are you sure you want to go? And he said, oh, Pastor. I love to go there. I said, why do you love to go there? He goes, it's the highlight of my week. I love to go there. I feel God is with me when I go on the train. And when I come back, and he said, a few people come, and sometimes maybe no one comes to the Bible study. And I said, well, you don't have to go. If you, you know, we can change it. He said, oh, no, I, I want to go. I wondered if that relates to this verse 29, where do I also labor, striving according to his working, his working, which works in me mightily. He's working in me mightily. I am part of this. This is beautiful. Now I'll turn to first, Second Kings, please, to the Main part, Second Kings, Chapter Four. Verse One. Thank you for all the love that you have for me my family, the church in Baltimore, and your, your love, thank you very much. We appreciate it and see it. In this story, we see a woman who, whose husband died, and she's in trouble financially in 2 Kings 4, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the, of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah. 
saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor has come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. First point, the woman was a woman of God. Her husband was in the school of the prophets. I am sure she knew Elijah in a personal way. Her husband had been in his school. Probably she went to the same Bible school. Probably she had the same faith. Probably she knew the spirit moving and working through the prophet Elijah. Uh, we could compare her to a Bible college student. Uh, we could say that she lived a life of faith. But now she has difficulties because her husband has died. They owe money. And she has two sons. And it may be that her two sons will be slaves in order to pay the debt. It is possible to find yourself in trouble. It is possible for you to be disappointed in the ministry. You could even say, my husband has followed God. And now look at the problem that we have. We could even say that we have followed God with all our hearts. And now we are being tested. I think sometimes we say we're disappointed with ourselves. We might say, I, I felt that I was capable, but I am disappointed with myself. I'm disappointed with my performance or disappointed with my life. I'm disappointed with the church. I'm disappointed with my friends or with my uh, best friend has disappointed me. Whatever, however you want to draw the picture, chapter 4, verse 1 is a trial. And it's very important for the woman to hear what the Spirit says. What does the Spirit say to me? What does the Spirit want to do? What is the Holy Spirit doing in our lives? How does the Holy Spirit minister to us? Sometimes when people go by faith, they find themselves, like Peter, walking on the water and then sinking in the water. Of course, but even as we sink in the water, Christ is there very close to us. And he has something to say because it says the riches of the glory of Christ, which is Christ in you. Meaning in this story, even though on the outside there is a great answer. And it is really the fact that God never leaves us and never forsakes us. She said to Elijah, I think that's a good point. She said to Elijah, who do you talk to? Is it Elijah or someone else? Are you talking to the right people about your trouble or about your problem? Is God the answer for your problem or your trouble? Is Christ dwell in us? And can we see Christ in the body of Christ? Who are we talking to? Sometimes we talk in the barber shop or the hair salon or we talk to a friend who isn't a believer, or we read it in the newspaper, or watch a movie and make a decision based on a movie, or what somebody is saying on the streets, or at the university or somewhere. Well, maybe those words of advice, they maybe have some value, but this woman has the sense to say, I need to hear from God. I need to hear what does the Holy Spirit say to me. So verse 2. And Elijah said unto her, 
this is a good word. He's not deaf. He's listening. And Elijah said unto her. That means our consciousness of our life has to have another dimension than just reason. I need a man of God or I need the Bible to speak. I need Christ to say to me. I need Him in my heart, in my life. Because this is the mystery of our new life. Is Christ in us? He is in us. He is. This is This is what makes us different. Sometimes when we share our faith with people, we make a point. I'm not a particularly religious person. I sometimes say that to people. I also said to someone in um, Baltimore, but this is an old story, but comes back to my mind just now. I said to this man, he said he was Catholic. I said, if you were born in India, you would probably be a Hindu. If you were born in Saudi Arabia, probably a Muslim. If you were born in Poland, probably Catholic. And where were you born? He said, I was born here in America. I said, are you a believer in Christ? Yes, I am a Catholic. I said, are you Catholic because of the family you were born into? Or are you believing because it is true? Are you believing because you're convinced it's true? Or are you believing because of where you were born? Simple. The principle applies to a believer. If, as a believer, Christ dwells in us, then are we paying attention? To him, or are we living by our culture or our natural man? Are we doing what our, our maybe what the, everyone in our culture is doing, or are we paying attention to what the Spirit is saying? The Spirit says, Speak to Elijah. And Elijah said in verse 2, What shall I do for you? Tell me. <coughs> What do you have in the house? I like that. Wisdom. What should I do for you? First question. What should I do for you? And before she answers, he said, What do you have in your house? He didn't say, This is what you should have, or maybe in a year you will have something. But he said, What do you have just now? in a very real way in your house. God is going to work with something that exists already. What is in your house? And she said, a little oil. In verse 2, And she said, Thy handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Let's use that. Let's use that. Let's not talk about what we don't have. Let's look at what we have and see God in what we have. Let's see God in the little that I have. Let's see God in my little time, little opportunities, my small life, my poverty. Let me see God move in what I have. This is Christ in us, the hope of glory. This is it. Christ in me. What I have, that's all. Not what I don't have, what I have. This is it. God wants to show me Christ in my life with what I have, as little as it is. And I don't have to be wishing my life would be like that person's life. Some people think like this. What I want, 
Guys, I want to have what he has. I want what she has. And, and the answer to that is no, no, no. The mystery is Christ in you. Christ is here with us. With the little I have, I want to see Jesus in my life now. I want Christ in my life now, where I am at right now in my life, in my trouble now. I want Jesus in the jail cell with me now. I want Christ in my life now, when I have problems in my mind or my emotions. I want to believe God is for me right now, ever-present help in every time of need. That's it, isn't it? Thine handmaid is not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, go, borrow the vessels abroad of all your neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Empty plastic cups and plastic uh, containers and buckets and um, oil drums, empty oil drums and any container, teacup, any container you can imagine. Elijah said, she said, go borrow these vessels. And he said, he made a point, not a few, not a few. Well, reason cannot do this. Reason limits God. Reason says it can't happen. Reason says, show me the plan. And Elijah says, what are the vessels? And didn't say what the results would be. Go by faith. Christ is in you. Live by faith. Christ is in you. Live by faith in Christ. Come to the service by faith. Come to the convention by faith. Love your wife by faith. Love your husband by faith. Pray for your children by faith. Love your neighbor by faith. Work at your working place the man or the woman that irritates you very much. They irritate you at work. They want your job. They, they steal your lunch at lunchtime. They irritate you to the end. Well, by reason, by ourselves, we are disappointed people sooner or later. But have you found, and this is my prayer with you, have we found the, the mystery? <laughs> you can't explain it. Why does he have so much peace? Why at that working place does he have so much hope? Why in his life is he so edified? Why in his life does he have such an attitude? What has happened? And we say, we, we know that Jesus is in every one of our lives. That Jesus is real. That our God is a living God. We can say we have seen Jesus moving. We have seen Jesus answer. We have seen oil come. You see, oil comes. Look at this story, verse 4. When... You are come in, you shall shut the door upon you and upon your sons and shall pour out into all those vessels and you shall set aside that which is full. <clears throat> I'm sure many of you have lived like that. Where you've, gone, you've gone before God and you've, you've obeyed Him You've obeyed him. You haven't seen any results, but you've obeyed him. And you shut the door. And, and as you are there, 
there's some Holy Spirit sense. I did the right thing. I don't see any results. I, I know in my heart, in my heart, I've obeyed, I've followed, I've believed. Yes, I found myself in trouble, but now I have found myself again in faith. Rediscover again your capacity to believe again what God has to say. We did it when we were young, and we can do it when we are old. We can believe again what God has sent. And shut the door. It's almost as if the Lord doesn't want anyone out in the world to know what is happening in our hearts. It seems as though He doesn't let anyone out there see it. They must also discover it by faith. I think that's true. Don't cast your pearls before swine, Christ said. Remember, Joseph was in Egypt and they couldn't see who he was. And Joseph, when he heard the Hebrew language, his brothers talking, he went into the side room and he wept. And he clean washed his face and he came back out. And they did not know who he was. When Christ came into the world, Many people did not know him. There is a blindness in the world. There is reason. There are observations. There are studies. But they cannot get a hold of him and comprehend him unless the Holy Spirit reveals to us who he is. And when we see him and recognize him, that's awesome. It's amazing. We get saved. Then after being saved, we are disappointed with ourselves and other people and many things. But we go back to the same person. And we say, Lord, are you there? Show yourself to me again. Encourage me again. Show me your glory. Show me. Moses' prayer in Exodus 33 was maybe the greatest prayer in the Bible. And it was this, Lord, show me your glory. And the Lord put him in the cave, walked past, and Moses saw the glory of God, but not the face of God. When Christ came into the world, we see the face of God. But for some, there was a veil there. Like Moses had a veil over his face. And God does not reveal himself to the proud, but he reveals himself to the humble. And that's what our fellowship is. And then in verse 5, as we finish here, it says, So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought these vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a, a vessel. And he said unto her, There's not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. I like that part. In the beginning, she hesitates, I assume, to get vessels. At the end, she's saying, I wish I had more. In the beginning, she's saying, okay, let's get the vessels. She tells her sons, go get the vessels. Okay, just get the vessels. He said so. Just get the vessels. But then as she realizes, realizes, this is like us, when we realize that Christ is real, we say, oh, I wish I could have, I wish I could have trusted him in all the areas of my life. I wish I could have believed all the years of my life. I wish I could have seen, I wish I could have invested more and gotten more empty vessels. I wish I could have lived in faith in every area because I would have seen the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ in my life. I think many people here have borrowed a lot of vessels. I think you have. 
and you know what this is. You have borrowed many empty vessels, not sure what would happen. But as you see it happening, as you see it happening, you say, get another vessel, get another vessel, and the answer is there aren't any more. There are times in our life where the only thing that really gives God pleasure is our faith. There are times in our life where there's no answer but faith. There are times when we will not regret the faith that we have walked in. And we have said, I walked by faith. I did this by faith and I am not ashamed. I'm deeply encouraged because God is faithful who's called us into the fellowship of his dear son in 1 Corinthians 1.9. And one day we will go to heaven like Billy Graham says. He said, when we go to heaven, we'll realize how, much, how many of our prayers were answered. And we will wish that we had prayed more. Because we saw the hand of God. We will see that in heaven. And much more in heaven we will see. And we will say, oh, grab another vessel. It's too late. It's only here. In this life where we get the empty vessels, not knowing what will happen, not knowing or understanding how it works, we will get the empty vessels now in this life. And then we will see the faithfulness of God to this Bible school student who is now a widow. Elijah said, take the oil, pay the debt, and live thou and thy children off the rest. There you go. God was good to her. God is good to you. There we go. We have to be careful how we look at things. I know of a case, and I, don't, I will finish in a minute. I know of a case where these people have everything you'd ever want. They have everything. They have a job. They both have jobs. They have possessions. They, healthy children, but they are so unthankful. I, I say to them, I, do you realize what you have just naturally? With just by, but naturally God has given you so much and you are so unthankful. That is not the Spirit of God. That is the carnality. What is a servant of the servants? As pastor said, Devendra, mm. in everything give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Then you find some family that has gone through a lot. They don't have much. They have deaths in the family. They have cancer and problems with their children and all kinds of difficulties. And you find in them an amazing mystery revealed. The mystery of Christ revealed from faith to faith. How do I get the faith? By listening to this book. It is not my temperament. It is not my personality. It is not my culture. It is not from my history. It's not my family. It's not something that naturally comes to me. It's by listening to this in the presence of God. In the presence of God. The Bible gives you faith, and you live by faith, and you go by faith. Sometimes when I was a young missionary in Europe, and Pastor Stevens would come to visit, I would have my questions ready. I would have my question to ask Pastor. I was troubled by something as I was living. It usually happened every year. By the time he came, I was troubled by something. I had a question I needed to ask him. And then so we would get there on Friday, would be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a few days. And I was ready to ask him, but I couldn't ask him. It just didn't seem right on the first night. On the next day I was listening. On the third day I forgot what it was. I think it kind of got swallowed up by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit built me up 
in Christ. Christ is our peace. Christ is our answer. Christ is our wisdom. Christ is our way. Christ is our new life. Christ is how we now live. Christ is our fellowship. This is why Paul said, I am, I am preaching and teaching, warning every man that they would find and discover that Christ is in them because we are able to throw it away. To cry, complain, be troubled. Of course, I am the first. Worry on the boat, we're going to drown. Jesus said, Oh, ye of little faith, how long must I be with you? But the sea is subject to me. I am with you. Come on. Listen. Follow me. We need this. Borrow the vessels. And we do. And we are amazed. So, um, I think the consciousness of the Spirit in our fellowship and the awareness of the Spirit in our life, what God says to us in His Word, is able to build us up and give us an inheritance that is undefiled and incorruptible and fades not away. I think this is our privilege today. And soon, one day, we'll see more clearly. And even today, we see very clearly, at least I feel this, I see very clearly the limits of human reason. For example, the Western world and the whole world has more trouble than it has ever had with problems that men cannot solve. Man has created a world of civilization with problems that cannot be solved by man. We have made ourselves a dangerous world. This world that we live in is dangerous and can change in a moment. Well, it only takes a little bit of sense to say, where should I go? How should I live? And Jesus on the cross saying, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the one they have thrown away. They throw me away. And they don't need me. But I'm call, calling you to a life of faith. And you will know me. You'll know me in this life. You'll know my peace. You'll know my wisdom. You'll know my word, you'll know my people, and you'll have hope of glory. You'll know that death is not your home. Life and heaven is. We will know that, and we know that. And that's such a privilege, such an honor as people. It's so amazing to be able to say, I know, I know, Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, let not a man boast in his wisdom, a man boast in his might, a boast in his possessions, but let him that boast, boast in this, that he knows me and he understands me. Who can boast, who can say? I think the woman could say it after the miracle. Oh, I know, I know, Elijah, this is what happened. I know, I know. To be able to say that, I know, I know. Paul, I know, I know. Many things we do not know. We are not above other people. I, I know this. I am not any better than anyone, anywhere, at any time. No, I am not any better. But, uh, but when you know, when the oil is there, when the vessels are full, when the oil is there, you cannot deny it. The oil is there, it came, the oil came. Christ is risen, he really is. 
that he came, that God the Holy Spirit came into our hearts when we have the life of Christ. We know this. This is what we know, and this is what we glory in. And this is our, our hope of glory and our great privilege on the earth as his people. Amen.